This video was made possible thanks to the support of our amazing patrons. We couldn't do this without you. Don't forget that you can support the channel for free and receive 10% off orders over $10 of Flipside Gaming by using the promo code AFFINITY at the checkout. Or if TCG Player and Magic Madhouse are more your thing, then be sure to place your order through our affiliate links in the description. Once again, at no extra cost to yourselves. Hello everyone and welcome back to Affinity for Commander. My name is Alex and today we've got a game involving knuckle knocking knights, an interestingly invasive insect, a lovely landfall lady, and some bears. As always, if you like this type of content, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more just like it. But for now, let's move on to our opening hands. Thomas is playing his Aula Queen Among Bears Bear Tribal deck. His opening hand contains Alpine Grizzly, Ashcote Bear, Brass Herald, Havenwood Battleground, Blighted Woodland, and two forests. Hugo's commander is Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale, heading a Knight Tribal deck with an equipment sub theme. He keeps an opening hand of Adriana, Captain of the Guard, Bedevil, Murderous Rider, Soul Ring, Command Tower. Path of Ancestry, and Tournament Grounds. I, in keeping with our Tribal theme, am playing Cathril Aspect Warper. It's keyword Tribal, that counts okay. My hand is made up of Thornwield Archer, Unbreakable Bond, Swords to Plowshares, Hornet Queen, Commander's Sphere, A Plains, and A Swamp. And finally Luke, in a complete tearaway move from the rest of the table, is not playing a Tribal deck. I know, right? He is playing his Rada Heart of Keld Heavy Ramp deck, and keeps an opening hand containing Dryad of Ilsian Grove, Ripjaw Raptor, Multani Yavamai's Avatar, Nylea's Intervention, Some of the Tested, A Forest, and A Mountain. Thomas wins the die roll and starts the game off by playing Havenwood Battleground, which enters Tapts. He then passes to Hugo. In his turn, Hugo plays Command Tower and taps it to cast a turn on Soul Ring. He then ends his turn. In my turn I also play Command Tower, but lacking a Soul Ring of my own, simply pass to Luke. In his turn Luke plays a Forest, and then ends his turn. Thomas plays Hickory Woodlot, which enters with two Depletion Counters on it. He then passes to Hugo. In his turn Hugo taps his Soul Ring and Command Tower, floats a Colas Manor, and casts open the Armoury. He searches library for Argentum armor, putting the permanent destroying plate into his hand. Hugo then plays Boros Garrison, bouncing his command tower back to his hand, and ends his turn. In my turn I play a Swamp, cast Thornwheeled Archer, and pass. For his turn Luke plays a Mountain, and lacking a 2 drop, ends the turn. Thomas starts his turn by playing Blighted Woodland. He then taps his woodlot and removes a depletion counter to generate two green mana, which he then uses to cast his commander, Aula, Queen Among Bears. Thomas then taps and sacrifices the Havenwood Battleground to generate two more green mana, which he uses to cast Broken Bond. He destroys Hugo's Soul Ring and puts a basic forest into play with the spell's ability. Happy with his unbearably destructive antics, Thomas passes to Hugo. With his mana now nearly cut in half, Hugo plays Path of Ancestry and ends his turn. I start my turn by playing a Plains and then move to combat. Where I attack Thomas with my Archer. He is barely able to comprehend this and doesn't block. Thomas takes 2 damage and I pass the turn. Luke plays a Mountain and then casts his commander. Rada, Heart of Keld. With nothing else to do, he proceeds to his end step, in which Thomas responds by flashing in Ashcote Bear. This triggers his commander, and Thomas chooses to place two plus one plus one counters on Aula. He then proceeds to his turn. After playing a basic forest, Thomas moves immediately to combat to repay me for my earlier jab. He attacks me with both of his bears, and I respond by casting Swords to Plowshares, targeting Aula. The Fluffy Queen is put back into the command zone, and Thomas gains 4 life, and I then lose 2 from the unblocked bear. 
In his second main phase, Thomas removes the last depletion counter from his land, and also sacrifices Blighted Woodland to put two forests into play tapped. With nothing more to do, he ends his turn. Hugo moves to his turn and replays his command tower. Looking to replace his mana acceleration, Hugo taps out to cast Smothering Tithe. And for the purposes of brevity and our sanity, from now on, unless otherwise stated, assume no one pays for the tithe. After all, you'll be right most of the time. Moving to my turn, I play Scoured Barons, gaining a life. I then move to combat and attack Hugo with my archer for having the gall to play Smothering Tithe in this gentleman's game. He takes 2 damage, and I then move to my second main phase, where I cast Vampire Nighthawk. I then pass to Luke. In Luke's turn, he uses Commander's ability to look at the top card of his library, which is not a land. He then plays Rootbound Crag as his land for turn. Luke then casts Samet the Tested, and pluses the Planeswalker, targeting his commander. Wishing to leave a blocker back, Luke passes to Thomas. In his turn, Thomas taps out to recast Ayula for a second time. Honestly, this is an unbearable mana cost for a 2-2. Thomas then ends his turn. Hugo plays Tournament Grounds as his land, and then casts Boros Signet. Using his Signet and two treasures, he casts his commander, Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ash Vale. Happily set up for his next turn, Hugo passes to Martin. In my draw step, I pay the Smothering Tithe tax and then play Sungrass Prairie. Moving to combat, I attack Hugo with both of my Death Touches. He chooses not to block and takes 4 damage, and I end my turn. After drawing for his turn, Luke once again does not find a land on the top of his library, and so casts Solemn Simulacrum. He puts a forest into play with a sad robot's ETB, and then rechecks his top card. He once again finds a non-land card, and proceeds to uptick Samut, targeting his commander, and then moves to combat. Luke attacks Hugo with his commander, and after briefly debating blocking and trading commanders, Hugo decides against it, and takes the 6 commander damage. Slightly put out by missing land, Luke ends his turn. Thomas plays a forest, and then taps out to cast Shared Summonings. Using this, Thomas finds Werebear and Druid's Familiar, putting both bears into his hand. He then passes to Hugo. Hugo begins his turn by casting the Argentum armor he tutored for earlier. He then plays a completely off-theme planes from Theros. Alex, be nice. Hugo then plays a completely fine planes, and then casts Stoneforge Masterwork. Using Sir Gwyn's ability, he then equips both breastplates to his commander for free, which I have no idea how that would work in reality, but there we go. Hugo then moves to combat, and after much deliberation, he decides to attack Thomas. With the Argentum armor trigger, Hugo chooses to destroy Luke's Samet, leaving Martin the only person not hurt by this attack. Hugo draws a card and loses one life from Sir Gwyn's attack trigger, and Thomas chooses not to block, taking 11 commander damage. Happy to have angered two-thirds of the table, Hugo passes to Martin. In my turn, I pay for Mana Tithe, then tap Commander's Sphere, floating a black mana, and sacrifice the artifact to draw a card. I then use the floating mana and Command Tower to cast Grizzly Salvage. I reveal a Chroma, Angel of Wrath, Corpse Connoisseur, Celestia Sanctuary, Darksteel Sentinel, and Swiftfoot Boots. I put the Sanctuary into my hand, and then play it as my land for turn, bouncing a swamp to my hand before ending my turn. Luke starts his turn off by checking the top card of his library to once again find no land. So instead, he casts Nylea's Intervention, where X is 3. With this spell's ability, he puts Rogue's Passage, Fabled Passage, and Field of the Dead into his hand. He then checks his top card to finally find a land there, and plays Rushwood Grove as his land for turn, before passing to Thomas. Thomas starts his turn by playing Werebear. This triggers Ayula, putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on her, and Thomas then casts Alpine Grizzly. After some brief debate about whether or not the Grizzly counts as a true bear, given that it's not a 2-2, Thomas elects to put 2 more plus 1 plus 1 counters on Ayula. Moving to the end step, Hugo responds by casting Swift End, destroying the swarm of the bear and sending Murderous Rider on an adventure. Hugo loses 2 life, and then moves to his turn. 
Keeping on theme, Hugo casts Knight of the E1 Legion with his Path of Ancestry, scrying one and then the top card of his library where it is. Hugo then casts Adriana, Captain of the Guard, and uses his last treasure token to cast Blackblade Reforged, prompting a sound from Martin like that of a baby goat. Let's listen in. I can play Black Bay uh, uh. <laughs> Just beautiful. Hugo then equips his sword to Sir Gwyn, giving them 18 power. Moving to combat, Hugo declares Sir Gwyn to attack Martin. The armor triggers, and Hugo then chooses to destroy Martin's vampire Nighthawk. Hugo then draws a card and loses one life from Sir Gwyn's attack trigger. Now unable to block the menacing knight, Martin takes 18 damage. Satisfied with himself, Hugo passes the turn, putting a plus one plus one counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion with its own ability. In my turn, I replay my swamp and then completely tap out to cast Hornet Queen, creating four lovely little death touchy blockers. Feeling safe behind my buzzy wall, I pass to Luke. Luke begins his turn by playing a Reliquary Tower and then casting Dryad of Ilsean Grove. For his additional land for turn, Luke plays the Field of the Dead he tutored for last turn. He then also casts Magus of the Wheel, hoping to survive one more turn to try and wheel for an answer. Luke then passes. For his turn, Thomas taps out and casts Brass Herald, naming Bear with its ETB. Thomas reveals Grizzly Bear as the only bear in the top four cards of his library and puts it into his hand. He then rather cautiously passes the turn to Hugo. Still surprisingly short on mana, Hugo casts Rakdos Signet. He then casts Murderous Rider, having it returned from its bear slaying adventures. Hugo then moves the Black Blade over to Adriana and his Stoneforge Masterwork over to his Knight of the Ebon Legion. Moving to combat, Hugo attacks all of his creatures that are able to do so, this time turning his cavalry entirely against Luke. This triggers Sir Gwyn, having Hugo draw three cards and lose three life. Hugo then uses the Argentum Armour's trigger to destroy Luke's commander, and Adriana's melee ability also triggers multiple times. Meaning Hugo's creatures are attacking 4, 10, 5 and 12 respectively. Moving to blockers, Luke blocks Adriana and Knight of the Ebon Legion with his Solemn and Magus, letting himself take the 12 commander damage. Luke draws a card from his sad robot's dying trigger, and Hugo moves to his second main phase. Here he attaches his black blade and stony armor to the murderous rider, and then casts Orzo's signet to fully round out his signet collection. Hugo then ends his turn. For my turn, I play a Swamp and then cast my commander, Cathril Aspect Warper, who enters with Flying, Death Touch, Indestructible, Lifelink, First Strike, Vigilance and 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters. I then cast Stitch together to return my Akruma Angel of Wrath directly to the battlefield. Moving to combat, I attack Hugo with my Hasty Angel, dealing him 6 damage. I then pass the turn to Luke. In his turn, Luke plays Rogue's Passage, triggering his Field of the Dead to create a 2-2 zombie. He then plays a forest as additional land for turn, triggering Field of the Dead once more to make another undead friend. Luke then casts Nyssa who shakes the world, being very careful about how he taps his mana to make the most of her static ability. He pluses Nyssa, putting 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on a forest and making it an elemental until his next turn. Desperate for blockers so he doesn't die to the Hugo Inquisition, Luke passes the turn without attacking. Thomas begins his turn by re re recasting his commander for 8 mana. This is getting hard to bear now. With nothing else to do, Thomas passes the turn. In his end step, however, Hugo casts Mortify, targeting my buzzy queen. The Hornet is destroyed, and Hugo moves to his turn. Hugo begins his turn by casting Sword of Vengeance and Scythe of the Wretched, prompting multiple groans from the table. He then equips the Scythe to his commander, the Sword of Vengeance to Adriana, and moves the Stoneforge Plate over to his Knight of the Ebon Legion. Happy with his equipment's arrangement, he then casts Ariel, Knight of Windgrace, because there ain't no kill like Overkill. Hugo then moves to combat, swinging everything apart from the Panther Knight at Martin. 
He uses the Argentum Armor's trigger to destroy a Chroma, and then loses 4 life and draws 4 cards thanks to Sir Gwyn's ability. Moving to blocks, Martin blocks Adriana with his Thorn Wield Archer, Sir Gwyn with 2 Death Touch Buggies, and the remaining 2 Knights with 2 other Bugs. For damage, however, Hugo responds by casting Swords to Plowshares, targeting Cathril. The giant bug is exiled, put back into the command zone, and Martin gains 9 life. All creatures involved, apart from Adriana, are destroyed after damage. Moving to his main 2 with a less messy board, Hugo plays a Dragon Skull Summit that enters tapped, and then ends his turn. In my turn, I tap 6 mana to cast Ever After. I use the sorcery to put a Chroma Angel of Wrath and Hornet Queen back into play from my graveyard, spawning a new round of 4 Death Touch Flyers. Happy with my rebuilt board state, I pass to Luke, who puts a storage counter on Rushwood Grove in my end step. Starting off his turn, Luke plays a mountain and the fabled passage that he tutored for earlier, triggering his Field of the Dead twice, creating two more 2 2 zombies. Taking advantage of Nissa's ability, Luke also recasts his commander, Rada, Heart of Kelt. He then pluses Nissa, making another of his lands an elemental with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on them. And finally, fully reaching for the stars, Luke casts both Salvala, Heart of the Wilds, and Ramanap Excavator. Now fully set up for a big swing next turn, Luke passes to Thomas. In his turn, Thomas casts Druid Familiar. Thomas stacks the triggers for his familiar and his commander, so his familiar soul bonds with Aeula first, and then he has the Queen Bear fights Ariel, proving once and for all, bears beat cats. The knight is destroyed, and Thomas then casts Uvenvold Bear. He uses the Morbid trigger to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on his commander, and puts a further 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on her as well from her own ability. In combat, Thomas attacks Hugo of all of his creatures that are able to do so. Before blockers are declared, Luke also comes in with a Timely Rogue's Passage activation, giving Aeula unblockable. In response to this, however, Hugo casts Bedevil, targeting and destroying the Swole Queen once more. Sorry, Thomas. Hugo then blocks the Alpine Grizzly with Adriana, who still has First Strike thanks to her Sword of Vengeance. Damage then occurs, the sword-wielding knight destroys the bear of First Strike, and Hugo takes 5 damage, putting him down to a single figure life total. With no more bears to cast, Thomas passes the turn. Hugo starts his turn off by casting in Garrick's Wake. In response to this, Luke uses Animated Land to put a storage counter on Rushwood Grove, and then all creatures other than Hugo's are destroyed. Having decimated the rest of the table, Hugo then passes to Martin. I play Gavany Township as my land for turn, and then cast Unbreakable Bond. I return, you guessed it, a Chroma Angel of Wrath to the battlefield of a lifelink counter. At the same time, Luke also cracks his fabled passage to put a forest into play and creates a zombie token. Moving to combat, I attack Hugo of my newly revived angel. He takes 6 damage, and I gain 6 thanks to her lifelink. I then pass to Luke. For his turn and chance at glory, Luke taps 4 mana and uses Rogue's Passage to give his zombie unblockable. He then moves to combat and declares an attack straight at Hugo. Not to be outdone though, Hugo casts Hero's Downfall, targeting the zombie. The corpse is returned to its unanimated state, and Luke moves to his main too. He casts and then sacrifices an expedition map. Luke searches library for Vesuva, which he then plays, having it enter as a copy of Field of the Dead. Both lands now trigger, creating two 2-2 two -two zombies. Vowing to get his revenge next turn, Luke passes. Thomas taps out to cast Wild Pair, a card that actually seems super powerful in a bear deck. If only he had any to play. Moving straight along, Thomas passes to Hugo. Hugo begins his turn by recasting his commander. With Sir Gwyn in play, Hugo then equips all of his equipment to Adriana for free. Moving to combat, Hugo attacks Martin with a multi-weapon wielding captain. 
He draws one and loses one life due to Sir Gwyn's ability and uses the Argentum Armour's trigger to destroy a Chroma. Martin then takes 24 damage, putting him on a rather perilous life total. In his second main phase, Hugo swaps the Argentum Armour and Stoneforge Masterwork over to his commander and then passes the turn. I start my turn by recasting my commander, Cathril Aspect Warper. Our lovely little bug enters again with 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters and Vigilance, Indestructible, First Strike, Flying, Death Touch and Lifelink. Sadly however, Cathril doesn't have a haste counter, so I pass to Luke. In his turn, Luke casts a very pretty Xenagos, God of Revels, and then debates whether or not he should attempt to kill Hugo again. After some brief deliberation, Luke decides not to attack and leaves his Rogue's Passage up to help out another player later on. Plans made, Luke passes to Thomas. Thomas starts his turn by casting Grizzly Bears, triggering Wild Pair. He searches his library for Striped Bear and puts the adorable Ball of Fluff into play. Leaving two mana open, Thomas ends his turn. Hugo, for his turn, taps completely out and casts a Heliod's Intervention where X is 15. He gains 30 life, completely saving him from Death's Grasp. Now out of danger from killing himself with Sir Gwyn's triggers, Hugo moves all of his equipment over to Adriana apart from the Stoneforge Masterwork, which he has remained on Sir Gwyn. Moving to combat, Hugo attacks Martin with the menacing Sir Gwyn and Luke with the kitted up Adriana. He uses the Argentum armor trigger to destroy Luke's original Field of the Dead and then loses two life and draws two cards thanks to his commander's ability. Moving to damage, Martin takes lethal damage from Sir Gwyn, knocking him out of the game, and Luke, in a ballsy move, chooses not to block and takes the 25 damage putting him on 3 life. In his main 2, Hugo rearranges his equipment once again. And then happily back on top, Hugo passes the turn. In his turn, Luke plays a mountain, generating another zombie with Field of the Dead. After much, much deliberating with Thomas, Luke decides to end his turn, keeping up Rogue's Passage to help Thomas get in any damage he can. Kicking off his turn, Thomas casts Hydra's Growth, enchanting his Striped Bear, putting a plus one plus one counter on his creature. Thomas curses lack of available mana, and then passes to Hugo. Hugo begins his turn by playing Temple of Triumph, scrying the top card of his library to the bottom. He then taps three mana, including Path of Ancestry, to cast Midnight Reaper. Hugo once again scries, but this time leaves the card on top of his library. After some quick maths, Hugo rearranges his equipment to have his commander holding his scythe and the Stoneforge armour, and Adriana having the Sword of Vengeance, Black Blade Reforged, and the Argentum armour. Moving to combat, Hugo attacks Thomas with his commander and Luke of Adriana. Hugo loses two life and draws two cards, and targets the Hydra Bear monstrosity on Thomas's board with the Argentum armour's trigger. In response, Thomas casts Ranger's Guile, giving his bear hexproof and plus one plus one until the end of turn. With the ability now fizzled, Luke decides to act as the absolute agent of chaos and activate Rogue's Passage, giving Hugo's commander unblockable. With Sir Gwyn now unblockable and Luke with no means to stop the trampley sword wielding captain, both players are dealt lethal damage, crowning Hugo the victor. Which, if nothing else, just goes to show you that if you have the opportunity to kill someone, you should take it. But that will be where we're going to end the video for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you like this channel and the content we produce, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment below. We read every single one of them. As well, make sure that you click the bell icon, because YouTube is not great at letting you know when our videos come out. You can also follow us on Twitter, at 4Commander, or if you really like us, you could consider becoming a patron of the channel yourself, for access to exclusive EDH-related rewards. But that'll be it from us. We'll see you next time.